Um, I, I have to admit, um, probably that or it would be nice for full disclosure that I actually asked Arthur if he would do this lightning talk. Um, because yes. earlier in the week, as I was scrolling through the news on my phone, I'm like, that picture looks familiar. And I tapped on the article. And I'm like, this is an article about Arthur. Like, <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't one of the C++ news streams that it was on. It was actually like something else. And I thought, oh, that's pretty good. So Arthur, please tell us what I read about. All right. Um, well, there you go. Yeah, it's uh, okay, about right. Um, yeah, and let, let's see, this probably won't be five minutes. I don't know. It, it's got 20 slides. Um, so what Michael saw was uh, this particle, I assume, uh, which hit uh, Reddit and Hacker News uh, recently. Um, and uh, it says software developer tracks down code for beloved 41-year-old text adventure. And it's got some links. And somewhere in here, it has a name. And that name is Arthur Dwyer. That's me. Uh, I made a series of blog posts. So if you follow my blog, uh, not through the things posted to uh, Reddit CPP, but like actual uh, every single post I write, uh, you might have noticed that I wrote about five posts about uh, a game called Castle Quest uh, recently. And, and my blog is mostly about C++, and so therefore it's kind of on topic for this uh, conference. But yeah, not really. Um, so when I was a kid in the like mid-90s, mid-late mid 90s, um, there was this thing called Genie. And it was the General Electric Network for Information Exchange. It was a competitor to uh, CompuServe and uh, the source and, and online uh, places like, like that where, where people would go. To, there were bulletin boards and, and forums and, and uh, uh, online games. And being a kid, I was really only there for the games. Um, the Genie Games Room uh, had the following games that you see on the, the screen here um, available for anyone to well, anyone who has subscribed to Genie to log in and, and play. Um, some of these were famous classic games that are like well known and and never have uh, never been out of print, right? They got ported all around, all over the place. You can play them on computers, you know, continuously for 40 years. Um, some of those being uh Crowther and Woods Adventure, David Platt's 550 point adventure, uh Hunt the Wumpus. And uh, there were also some multiplayer games that I never personally got into. Um, these are like uh, uh, clones of Mega Wars and, and things like that. I never really got into those. And, and my impression is that those relied on a community of, of players. And when Genie went away, uh, those games also went away. Um, but then there were a few games in their listing uh, that were single player text-based games, games that could have made the jump to the personal computer era. Um, and whoops, and uh, my computer just went to sleep. Um, I have to remember not to uh, go down into that corner of my screen. All right, let's try that again. Um, yes. You're back. It's good. All right. Um, so that leaves three uh, single player text games. Um, there was something called Black Dragon, which was a, a clone of D and D. Um, there was Castle Quest, a uh, text adventure, uh, and there was Dwarf Sagath, another text adventure with a, a sci-fi theme, which I don't personally remember. Um, but apparently, um, all of these are are lost or were lost, um, and uh, orthogonally to, to this, uh, in my adult life around uh, 2012, I got into collecting and taxonomizing variants of the computer game Adventure, right? The original Colossal Cave Adventure uh, was mentioned earlier as written by uh, Will Crowther and Don Woods, seen here. Um, and uh, it spawned hundreds of variations. Uh, I sort of got into taxonomizing them. I was not the uh, first person to have that idea, um, but I, I contributed a little bit. Um, here you see a little bit of the family tree uh, spawned by uh, Crowther and Wood's adventure. Um, if we zoom into it a little bit here, we've got a classic adventure up here in the uh, top corner, um, which begat uh, eventually Dave Platt's uh, 5 or 50 point adventure. We uh, saw that that was also available on Genie. Um, interesting side note to history, uh, adventure was also ported to the C-Web literate programming system by Donald Knuth. Um, and my favorite uh, of the versions that I've played uh, is actually Doug McDonald's 551 point adventure expansion, um, which he did at the Urbana Champlain uh, sometime in the late 80s. 
Uh, that game was based on Dave Long's 501 pointer from the University of Chicago Business School. Um, and Dave Long took that game and licensed it to CompuServe as a 751 point, huge expansion. Um, and I knew that that happened because people knew about it, but uh, it apparently had not survived uh, the demise of CompuServe, right? So these, these two systems, Genie and CompuServe, both died, both took a bunch of uh, really interesting games with them, and there were people looking for them. And I wanted to find David Long's adventure, so I made a web page about it. Uh, I actually managed to find Dave Long's email in 2016. We emailed back and forth a few times, um, but I have not heard from him in years, unfortunately, um, and no luck on any source code. Um, there is an awesome poster map that CompuServe sold in the 90s. Uh, this is an excerpt from that map. It's this crazy Where's Waldo kind of uh, thing. I'm, uh, it's right above my computer right now. Um, it, it's great. Uh, get yourself a copy. It's great. We see here the, the Troll Bridge. Uh, down here, we have the Pluffer Room uh, and the Whirlpool. And then we have the new areas over here. Um, there's, the, there's the Oyster in the Shell Room. And then over here, we have the Elephant Burial Ground. I've never been to the Elephant Burial Ground. I would love to go there, but that game is lost and remains lost. Um, but on this webpage um, for New Adventure, I also mentioned some other lost games, including Castle Quest. Uh, and Mike Holtzman, one of the co-creators of Castle Quest, uh, was, I guess, Googling himself and found, uh, or not even Googling himself, Googling the name Castle Quest, because at that point, I did not know that Castle Quest had these two people as authors. Um, but Mike Holtzman contacted me and said, hey, you know, I, I used to go to RPI and me and my roommate made this game. Um, and he gave me their names. Uh, and so naturally I Googled them. And I found that uh, there was a US Copyright Office entry, like a Library of Congress entry for the game Castle Quest. Um, that was interesting. Could we... Uh, could we get at whatever documentation the U.S. Copyright Office had? Um, so I tried to interest Holtzman in that. He never took me up on it. But then four years after that, his roommate, Mark Kirschenblatt, uh, found me online, um, You know, emailed me and, and said, hey, I, I saw you had this web page. And I said, awesome. Do you want to try to get back uh, the, the Copyright Office deposit? And Mark said, sure, just you know, pay my expenses. And I said, awesome. Um, so unfortunately, 2020 was you know, a global pandemic. And uh, it was really hard to get anything out of the Library of Congress right at that moment. So it took like five months. Um, but in early March of this year, 2021, uh, Mark Kirschenblatt got in the mail from the USCO a packet of scanned documents with a, a great cover page from uh, Mike Holtzman circa 1981 at the uh, Grumman Data Systems here, time-honored tradition of printing things out at work. Um, and over here we see the uh, stamp mark from the Library of Congress indicating that all of this stuff, of course, is copyrighted, um, which is true. Um, and it contained the entire source code of this game Castle Quest that I had played on Genie in the mid '90s that had been lost. You know, no one people were looking for this. You can find people asking on Reddit and, and like Metafilter about like I vaguely remember this game. There was a werewolf. It was awesome. Um, and now we we have the whole source code, uh, particularly boring bit of uh, source code on the screen here, and we had all the data files, uh, all the room descriptions, item descriptions, etc. And uh, you can actually download this, uh, compile it with G-Fortran. Uh, I fixed a few uh, you know, 1970s-isms in the code uh, so that it can actually compile on a modern system with G-Fortran. Uh, and you can play it on your own computer. Um, and uh, it is actually playable and winnable, just like it was uh, back in the day. Um, uh, I just uh, literally this morning uh, got an email uh, from a guy, uh, Dr. John P. Wesson, uh, who had been a grad student um, at RPI, uh, at Rensselaer, uh, back in the day. And uh, he had saved a notebook where he had printed out every time he beat one of these games on, on the RPI computer system. And so this is a, a printout from the, the 1980s um, of, of him getting 300 out of 300 on, on Castle Quest. Um, since this is probably going to go on YouTube, so of course I should say if you're uh, interested in lost games or if you made a game that has been lost or know where to get one. Um, there's uh, more about uh, lost games, uh, not only on 
my website, which is still up and I need to update it at some point. Uh, but Jason Dyer has a blog post about lost mainframe games. Um, these are the names and, and authors of some that are, uh, um, you know, still lost as far as I know. Uh, I don't know where to get a copy of these. I would love to see, for example, Black Dragon. I have great memories of that. Um, also, Ador Sagath, which we said was available on Genie, The Pits, which was available on The Source, and also has the USCO entry. Right? It's also copyrighted. There is something in the Library of Congress for this, uh, but my impression is that only the authors can retrieve it, and I don't know where they are. Um, uh, Dave Long's Adventure, there's uh, various other uh, dialects of adventure. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that I think that is it. <laughs>